What's going on, y'all? So another NBA team has been eliminated from the playoffs, and I got a haircut. You know what that means. I got to get back in front of the camera and talk about a potential offseason for you guys. Honestly, the haircut's not that great. It's it's hard to find a barber nowadays, man. I don't know. But let's let's get into the video. So we're back with ideal offseason. This is a series that I do where I try to build what would be an ideal offseason for the team. I try to make this as realistic as possible. Uh, this is not about always just like, hey, how are we going to win a championship? Or, hey, how are we going to do this? Or how are we going to do this? This is what I think would be the team's best move for this next offseason. And now, as you can see, the team in question today is the New Orleans Pelicans. They got bounced in four games yesterday. Lost the number one seeded uh, OKC Thunder. They didn't have their best player, Zion Williamson. Very tough to see. They went out kind of sad, honestly. Like it, I just didn't feel like the coach was making enough adjustments or anything. They should have played guys like Jordan Hawkins a little bit more. Um, they didn't do anything to switch up Brandon Ingram's game, which looked kind of gross. And from my understanding, Pelicans fans are not too happy with him right now. So we'll address it. We'll address it. Just hold on for a second. CJ McCollum didn't look great throughout the series. Valanchunas is a free agent now. Uh, at least Zion played a pretty healthy season, and he was good when he first got in the playoffs. And unfortunately, just an untimely injury. So what are we going to do with this team then? This team is in a very scary place in my opinion because they are almost in that kind of a purgatory, right? Of being not good and not bad. They've got good players, but they can't quite get over the hump. So I think that this is going to be my more drastic uh, ideal offseason. I think the Pelicans are going to be desperate to get out from under uh, the current space that they're at, which was the eight seed. And they're going to try to do something to try to push them into a higher point of contention within the Western Conference. And so that's what we're going to try to do today. I'm going to tell you right now, I don't see there's any world where I trade Brandon Ingram, not trading Zion Williamson. The rest of you are up for grabs, y'all. Because, like, look, I understand Brandon Ingram didn't play well in the series. He didn't create any separation or anything like that. Who am I going to get that's better than Brandon Ingram is the question. Like, who am I going to get to replace that spot in his talent? He's a good shooter. He's a good ball handler. He's a nice defender. He can pass. He just didn't look great in this series. Let's try not to get, like, too worked up about it. I got to try to figure out what I'm doing with this team. And I think Brandon Ingram has got to stick around for us to be able to do that. But yeah, taking a look at the current situation now. So some things that we got to make decisions on and just a couple other things to look at. Uh, salary cap space first. Let me let me zoom in so you guys can see. Uh, we're over the salary cap, which limits our ability to sign free agents this offseason. For those of you that don't know, you have to have bird rights to sign people when you're over uh, your luxury tax, which means they had to have been on your team for the previous season. So that means like Valanchunas. We can give Valanchunas a solid contract to come back, and we'll, we'll get to that option when we get there. Uh, but then we get into like luxury tax, right? where we're paying that much money, the first apron, the second apron, you're paying more and more. Uh, Pelican's owner, kind of a cheapskate, doesn't want to pay too much. So we have to try to somewhat ball on a budget, but at the same time, we're trying to be competitive as well. So we may not be throwing like the whole like stacks on stacks on stacks at things, but we got to make it make sense, right? We've also got some draft picks to work with, which is really going to help us, like really going to help us. We got first round picks going forward. We've got two first round picks this year. We've got two first round picks the next year. We've got two in 2027. We've got things that we can do, right? We've got moves that we can make with this. And so I got to try to scour the league to try and figure out who else I can bring in here to try and make this team a little better. Um, and we'll take a look at these guys first over here on the side because we've got a couple team options to look at. We've got Dyson Daniels, who I'm going to tell you right now, we're going to be bringing him back. So I'm not too worried about that. We're going to accept him. Trey Murphy, definitely bringing him back. Jose Alvarado, definitely bringing him back. Jeremiah Robinson Earl, uh, guess what? You're off the team, Jeremiah Robinson Earl. I just don't think we need you right now on the team. You're not really providing that much much for this team and I'd rather use it on some other roster space um just not just not a huge fan of his game so we've opened up a roster spot um it, the money doesn't really make a huge difference for us but we've got five roster spaces draft picks and guys to move let's go make some decisions First things first, who are we bringing back from the current team, right? Uh, there's a couple guys. We already touched on a couple options here. We've got Najee Marshall out there. We've got Jonas Valanciunas and Cody Zeller. The big one is Valanciunas, right? Like, what are we what are we going to do with him, right? Because we can't go into uh, luxury tax to go find another center. And if I duplicate this really quick, and what I want to do is I want to go to centers here. This is kind of what the options look like. Uh, Valanciunas is the highest paid center entering free agency. The guys that are better than him, uh, Hartenstein, Nick Claxton, uh, you could maybe convince me Mo Wagner at times. Otherwise, 
not looking all that great, right? And so we can't necessarily just go over the cap to go get those guys. And so my thought is that we kind of just have to bring Valanchunas back. And now Valanchunas is about to be 32 years old. He's getting up there in age. He can only provide so much help for us. The good news is we have Larry Nance, which is a good like second option. They're kind of a good opposite balance from each other. Like Valanchunas, very bulky, gets some rebounds, things like that. Larry Nance uh, can really go out there and play defense a little bit more on the perimeter if you need to, a little bit more athletic, can step out and shoot a little bit more. Uh, neither one of them are like phenomenal by any means, but it, given the options that we have, I'm not sure we can do anything else but plan on bringing Jonas Valanciunas back. Now, I don't know if you even need to pay him $15 million. I bet you we could get him for more like 12 for two years. So I think that that's the presumption we're going to act on. So I'm going to presume that Jonas Valanciunas is getting $12 million over two seasons to come back here. That's going to move Larry Nance back to the backup, and that's going to move Jonas up here. So what do, we, what do we have now? The same exact team that we had last year. But we needed a guy like that. There was no better option. We might as well have him so that if worse comes to worse in the middle of the season we have a very trade friendly contract that we can move right like maybe a different center becomes available throughout the year we're going to have draft picks that we can move valanchunas is going to be a very tradable contract that we can throw in to make some things happen but we got to make some upgrades now we have to make some actual upgrades now and so now we start thinking about trades and what I'm thinking is CJ McCollum. CJ McCollum is starting to lose his step just a little bit offensively. He still had a really good season. He had, no, he had a phenomenal shooting season. But can we do better than him? And that's the question. And are there going to be names available? I think that there are. I want you guys look at this. This fanspo stuff is so cool. Y'all should mess around with this stuff. That's what I'm going to be using for a lot of this video. They've got like trending players that are going to be traded and stuff. And these are... These are the two boys that I'm kind of looking at right here, DeJounte Murray and Trey Young. I think the Hawks need to blow some things up, and if you guys have been watching my uh, my college coach rebuilds the Atlanta Hawks series, you'll know that we did execute on a trade like this, and I think that there's something in the cards here to actually make that happen. And so I want to explore what it would be like to get either Trey Young or DeJounte Murray on this team. So let's take a look at this for a second, right? You've got DeJounte Murray making about $25 million a year. You got Trey Young making $43 million. Obviously, Trey Young, elite offensive player, right? That's awesome. And what, what is something that New Orleans kind of struggled with there was finding a guy that can go get his own shot. And I honestly think that Trey Young is probably the more valuable person for the Hawks to trade right now. This is the this is probably his peak in value because he's still got a lot of years left on his contract. They can take a couple things from us to make it happen. And I just I don't see them being able to correct anything with this roster soon enough to actually put a winning team around Trey Young. And I, I try to make this video realistic, like I really do. And I truly believe this. I think that they should move on from Trey Young in real life. And I think it's gonna be something that they actually consider. I think they're gonna look at the team and be like, okay, we're in cap hell right now. And the Atlanta Hawks uh, owner doesn't wanna pay all that. Let's get rid of these guys now. Let's try to acquire some assets back. Let's trade Trey Young to a separate conference somewhere where he can go win. I think that's a better possibility and that they actually uh, keep DeJounte Murray. Now, I could be completely wrong. Who knows what actually happens in the offseason, but I want to explore what it would take to get Trey Young on this team. I actually did another video uh, we, where we rebuilt the Spurs in an ideal offseason, so you guys should go watch that or whatever. But I said I don't want Trey Young on the Spurs. And the reason I didn't want him on the Spurs is, one, I don't think he fits their system. And two, I don't think it makes a lot of sense to like accelerate their timeline that fast. The Pelicans, we're trying to win right now. And he's going to fit this system a little bit more. It's a little bit more get up and down the court. We've got wings that can actually like run and do stuff. We've got guys that can go play defense, right? So I think Trey Young fits pretty perfectly on this team. And a him and Zion like pick and roll. Could you imagine? That would be absolutely insane. And maybe we convince Trey Young to play a little bit of off ball somehow. So maybe like Brandon Ingram can still be a ball handler. So the trade starts here right it starts off with a uh, cj mccollum for just um for trey young right what happens if we try this trade it failed yep pelicans are unable to make this trade um yeah they're, they're not sending out the pelicans and take 41 in salary based on blah 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 uh yeah so we need to cut oh we only need to cut another million 
Interesting, interesting. Okay, so let's go look at the rest of our roster. What kind of options do we have here to make it happen? We just brought Dyson Daniels back. Dyson Daniels is an interesting young player, right? That's a guy that we'd be willing to give up to them. There's guys like Jordan Hawkins out there who I like Jordan Hawkins a lot. I think we can build around him, but maybe that's a valuable asset to them. Just looking down the rest of the roster, like Jose Alvarado would be really interesting to them, but I think what we're going to do is we're going to have to throw in probably some combination of like either Herb or Trey Murphy or something like that, which is going to suck to do, but we'll explore it. Dyson Daniels is definitely going in this trade, though. So now CJ McCollum is going over there. And the idea with that is that when you look at CJ, can I see CJ? Can I get him back here? Yeah, so CJ doesn't have as much time left on his contract, right? Older guy, uh, wise guy to bring on the team. You save a little bit of money in this deal by bringing him on here. You get a young player in Dyson Daniels that's also um, going to be someone that they can develop. But more importantly, they're going to want the draft picks, right? They're going to want some draft picks from us, and we've got plenty of picks to do. So we actually have the picks listed here, right? Yes, yeah, so we've got a lot of things that we can include with them right now. And I actually, I have them listed out here as well. So we've got the 21st pick in this year's draft, the 18th pick in this year's draft, and we've got a bunch of picks going forward, right? A bunch of picks going forward. So here's here's kind of what I'm thinking. I think at the very least, they're gonna want some of our back end picks, right? Cause it's gonna take them a little bit of time to tear down their roster and build it back up. So let's just say, Let's just say we're starting off with two first round picks here. Uh, one of them being the 2027 first round pick here, the 2029 first round pick here. I'm going to move this one back up and then we give them one right away to work with. You can you can have the the 18th overall pick, right? That one I think is fine. You can have the 18th overall pick now in this year's draft. So now what does this trade look like? It's now CJ McCollum, Dyson Daniels, three first round picks first round picks are very valuable in the nba at this point like very valuable ever since the rudy gobert trade happened everybody's holding on to those picks just a little bit tighter right because they're like gold again so that's a lot to give up for somebody like a lot especially for a guy that only plays really one side of the ball now trey young was a better defender last year so that's a whole thing but that's that's a lot to give up for someone, especially because in a couple of years, who knows what the pelicans look like maybe zion moves on brandon ingram doesn't want to be here anymore trey young doesn't resign Pelicans could be bad, right? But that's the risk that we got to take. And so I'm just I'm just trying this trade, seeing if it goes through, this trade would go through. All right, very interesting. They actually have the Pelicans losing a game here. That's kind of interesting. That's really interesting. Okay, yeah, no, I'm going to I'm just going to go back to the trade, see how much this makes sense and kind of go from there. All right, I think this is the best that this trade is going to get. I made them take EJ Liddell as well. He's another young player for them to develop. And I also am telling them, hey, you're taking three of our first round picks for a guy that I'm not exactly sure like what I'm going to get on one end of the court for him. You at least have to take this little bit of money for me as well so that I can have another roster spot to play with. So we're going to push this trade, make sure it goes through. This trade is a success. We're going to assume that Trey Young is on this team. Now, let me have it in the comments if you think this trade isn't fair. But where, where else is Trey Young going? What else are they going to do? Like, what other team can make the salary work, give them a young player to play with, and give them all the draft picks? I just, I don't know what team it is, and I think they got to do something. So, in this world, Trey Young is now in the Pelicans. So, now Dyson Daniels comes off my team. EJ Liddell comes off my team. Who else did I just trade in this? CJ McCollum comes off my team. And now I have Trey Young on my team. Oh boy. So not only did we free up some roster spots, but Trey Young's now on the team. That's that's pretty crazy. And we still have a ton of draft picks. So you know what? Even if you guys didn't like that trade in the comments, just imagine they're throwing in another pick. All right. We still have a draft pick to use this year. I'm going to assume they're not getting both of them. I just don't think that makes a ton of sense. They can have one of our 2025 picks as well. Who cares? We've got Trey Young on the basketball team now. We now have our go to score. We have our complimentary score and we have whatever Zion Williamson is. He's just a monster, right? So we've got all that. We've got a starter quality center. That's nice. Uh, not always sold with it, but it's what we got at the end of the day. We have a ton of other good players like Herb Jones and Trey Murphy still on the team. Jordan Hawkins is still on the team. What happens now? We go to the draft. 
So Fanspo also has this little mock draft simulator that I think is actually pretty cool. So I'm actually going to use this to simulate the draft to then see who we would get to pick. Uh, it's pretty cool. Like it, it simulates like the lottery and everything and then takes you to like your current pick. So we'll have the 18th pick, but I'll just assume that we're picking for the Atlanta Hawks with that one. And then with the 21st pick, we'll actually make our selection. So this is a really cool tool. You guys should use it. Um, it uses like their own ratings algorithm and everything. I was messing around with it a bit earlier thought it was pretty cool so you can like adjust how much um a team drafts based on like overall talent versus like team need and everything so i've just kind of gone with like some base sliders for it, but this is just going to give us an idea of kind of who's going to be available right all right so this is the 18th pick this is someone that the hawks will get to use their draft pick on do they take like a devin carter or something like that because they don't have a point guard now well they have Dejounte murray and they have kobe buffkin but I don't know who else would they want to take. They've got a couple centers on the team. It could be McCuller. I could kind of see that being a thing. So we're going to assume that they're going to take McCuller. Yeah, I think I think that's who they're going to take with this one. So now 21st pick is going to be our pick. We'll make a selection there. All right, so we are up now. And obviously, CJ McCollum isn't actually on this team. Um, what does this mean? Does this mean I, I traded him? Is it remembering that? Because that's kind of cool if it is. But anyway, um, we have a decision to make. What do we want to do? I see Zach Eady there. Zach Eady's really interesting, but I also see Tyler Smith. Tyler Smith, if you guys have been watching this channel, is someone that I find very, very interesting, and you probably haven't watched him a lot. I think you should go watch the film because I don't know what it is about him but I like him. Like, I really, really like him. Um, he he could be a stretch four. He might be a three. It's really hard to tell, but he, I just feel like he's got a ton of potential and he's really raw. And so I want to take Tyler Smith with this. I don't think Zach Eady makes a ton of sense next to Zion Williamson. Just don't think that's the ideal fit. Uh, Devin Carter, I like a lot. Just don't think we need the point guard spot right now. So we're going to take Tyler Smith and add him to the team. All right, so we now have Tyler Smith on the roster, and he's going to be our backup four. What I'm thinking with him is he gives us a different look and an ability to play small ball at times. He's 6'10". He's probably more of a four slash three. He's kind of trying to figure out if he's a wing or like a bigger forward, but he's got stretch potential and he could pair well with Zion. So we could have someone with size on the court with Zion Williamson. And that's what we've been struggling to find this whole time with him. And so I love this pick. Uh, again, go watch the film on him if you haven't. I think he's very, very interesting. And so I love this addition of Tyler Smith to the team now we still have five roster spots to use and i'm gonna take this draft pick off as well because i'm gonna presume ah no not that one just uh just this one so i'm gonna presume that we have used that one and we've got to go to free agency and fill out the rest of the roster and i can already tell you the first one we're gonna do is we're probably gonna bring Najee marshall back because he was already on the team last year we can get him for cheap uh i can probably throw like a two three million dollar contract on him and that's probably good enough Najee Marshall this last year, seven points a game, was very good from the three-point line, pretty solid defender. I'd say we could give him, like, what if we gave him a nice, you see this contract kind of get thrown around a lot, like the, the nine million over three years type thing. So I want to bring in, uh, oopsies, I can't touch, I can't touch type. Y'all know what I'm trying to say. Marshall, Najee Marshall, three million dollars over three seasons. Najee Marshall, back on the team we have another option at the wing because you can never have too many of those guys we have four roster spots left that's awesome they're all going to be minimum contract guys so what do we want to fill the rest of this roster out with uh first thing is going to be another point guard right uh probably another uh wing or some sh some sort another big and then we don't have any second round picks or anything so it's not like that's going to happen in the draft but we'll, we'll scope around and see what else we can find to kind of fill out the rest of this roster but the rotation in itself is looking pretty good right now like we've got our two centers they're going to be good enough we have an interesting kind of center option if we want to where we can go a little more athletic but we can still have size at the same time because we've got guys like herb and trey that can play the two brandon ingram's big for his position zion is just is big in general and yeah no so we can get really really interesting with some lineups here let's take a look at point guards first who's like uh just a veteran point guard or something that we can bring onto this roster just to bring some toughness can i go get patrick beverly 
Patrick Beverly makes so much sense to bring on to this team, right? Just add to kind of the dog of it. Keep everybody focused on the team. Any team that Patrick Beverly is on instantly gets better. I'm bringing Patrick Beverly on for with like a minimum contract or something. Is he going to want to sign with the Pelicans? If we have Trey Young and everything, I bet you he says, yeah, no, I'll, I'll do that. Or maybe... I guess I can't sign him in anything more than a min. Is he going to sign with the team that's not the Pelicans? I don't know. In this world, I'm going to say people are so excited about Trey Young and Zion Williamson and Brandon Ingram and the possibility of these three playing together that Patrick Beverly also would like to be on this team. So Patrick Beverly's been in the NBA for 11 years, so I can go here and say that a minimum contract for him is going to be that much. There we go. Get off my screen advertisement. So we now have Patrick... Oh my God, what did I just do? Let's try that again. Copy this number over here. Put it in the Google Sheets form right here. One year contract. Welcome to the team, Pat Bev. There we go. Beautiful. We've got two interesting backup point guard options, right? Not a ton of scoring, but there's a lot of other scoring on this team, so I'm not too worried about that. We just want defensive players around Trey Young. That's all we've ever asked for on this team. We just want defensive oriented players around Trey Young. We've got small ball lineups. Small ball lineups we can go to a Zion Williamson and Tyler Smith with Brandon Ingram, where there's a lot of dynamic playmakers that can keep offense going. I think this could be the best team that Trey Young has ever possibly been on, but we need to fill three more roster spots. So let's go find a couple more minimum contract guys. I want to take a look at centers next. Who else can we bring in at center to kind of try to round things out a little bit? And what kind of like dynamicness do we want? It'd be nice to have an alley oop threat on the team because should like Nance or Valanchunas go down at any point. Trey Young loves playing with his run, jump, and dunk centers. So who could we go get for that? Like, is Christian Wood? Christian Wood's probably just going to opt to re-sign or whatever. Like, is a Thomas Bryant someone that's interesting? Drew Eubanks has a player option. I would assume that he's coming back. Damian Jones is kind of interesting. Mo Bamba. Mm, no, not quite. Do we think that we could just go get Mason Plumley? Like, who's going to give Mason Plumley anything but a minimum contract, right? Like, maybe that's being, like, you're, maybe I'm asking too much. Well, the center market's going to be so competitive this summer that somebody might end up paying him something for just, like, a year to come in. So I'm going to assume that I can't go get him. So I'll find, I'll find somebody else. Jericho Sims would be perfect if the Knicks let him go. I'm not sure they're going to let him go, though, is the thing. And that's where that's where I'm just I'm just not so sure about that. And I'm looking at other names and I'm not really seeing another center that's really catching my eye right now. Damian Jones is kind of interesting because he is kind of a lob threat, but he hasn't been all that effective. Man, Mason Plumlee's 34 at this point. I don't think anybody's going to throw any real money at him. So, you know what? We're going to we're going to assume that Mason Plumlee's going to want to play with us, man. We'll we'll give him a contract and we'll promise him a chance to like actually compete for a spot on the roster. So, I'm going to assume that Mason Plumlee is here. Mason Plumlee would get the exact same contract as Pat Bev because they've been in the league like the same amount of time. So Mason Plumlee is now an option here. This team's getting deeper. We got two roster spots left to fill. Let's go find like another two or something like that. Um, we'll, we'll go find some other wings. Who do we got available here? Let's just let's just look at uh, we'll just look at guards in general first to see who kind of else is out there. Can I just sort by something? Uh, yeah. I'd like to bring like a veteran presence on this team to try and get things going. Ooh, Lonnie Walker's a name. Like, I don't think he, I, I feel like Lonnie Walker's actually going to get a decent contract this year, but he's someone that I'm, I'm interested in nonetheless. Uh, Shake Milton's available. Shake Milton is a very interesting player to me. I'd, I'd be willing to give him another contract, like in all honesty. I feel like Shake Milton's a lot better than people give him credit for, so I'm kind of interested in that one, and I'm just looking around. I'm not really seeing anybody else I'm all that crazy about. So let's assume we're going to go get Shake Milton on an NBA contract. So Shake gets that much money for a year. Shake can go play this position. He's been known to play one through three at points. So I just like that he's dynamic. In a, in a reserve, it's nice to have someone that can slide in and play multiple positions. Do we just go find another forward or something then to round things off? I think that makes some sense. We've got a lot of good forwards, but hey, let's go Let's go find a reserve option. Who's all out there? Thanasis on Tentacumpo. Yes, I absolutely love it. No, we're not bringing Thanasis in. Uh, Kenny Martin Jr. Jr. is an interesting one. I feel like they'll probably try to bring him back. TJ Warren, do we just go get like a Marcus Morris or something like that to kind of round things out? 
that could be an interesting one like him or Mark Keefe just to have some like some toughness on the team Chetty Osmond's another guy that's probably not getting another contract he's a guy that we could bring in Nick Batum's a good name Doug McDermott's a good name because like how many like pure shooters do we have on this team we have Trey uh we got two trays actually um we got Jordan Hawkins we could probably use just like another straight up shooter let's go get let's go get Dougie McBuckets Doug McDermott, 10 years of service, so he gets the exact same contract that these guys do. There we go. One year, Doug McDermott, you can slide in right there, my guy. All right, your 2024-2025 New Orleans Pelicans. What do we think of it? You guys let me know. This is definitely the most like ambitious team that I've done for these uh, ideal off seasons. And obviously as the teams get better and certain situations come up, it's gonna be that way. And maybe we had to make a stretch or two to make things happen. I'll, I'll let you guys be the determining factor of that. I'm by no means Jesus of this stuff. Like, I'm, I'm trying to be as realistic as possible. I really think you can get Trey Young on this team. I really do. And I really don't think you have to give up that much to get him because you have so many draft picks here. And like, that is a lot to give up for someone in itself. Like, don't undersell the value of that stuff. Those things are gold to people, especially when the Atlanta Hawks traded so many of their picks to go get DeJounte Murray. But look at what you have with this team. You've got a lot of switchability. You've got a lot of dynamic playmakers guys that can keep plays going you've got a bunch of different lineups that you could go to here you have lob threats you have bruisers you have stretch bigs you've got ball handling wings right guys that can switch and guard multiple positions you've got lockdown defenders at the point guard spot you have a dynamic playmaker in trey young like I just, I want to see Trey Young and Zion play basketball together. That's a lot of good passing. Put that with Brandon Ingram, who's also a really good passer. Like, this is now a, this is now like a contending team if everybody stays healthy, right? And Trey Young's got the defenders around him. I just, I like the idea of this. I really like the idea of this. I think you can go far with this. This is an expensive team. They'd be going all in on it, but like, this is their time to do it, right? Like, this is their time to try to see if they can build something that works. And this is what I would do to make it happen. But hey, just my thoughts and everything you guys let me sound or you guys sound off in the comments it's getting late i'm tired this is my third video today i've literally cut my whole hair since like the day started and everything but thank you guys so much for watching as always always appreciate it i'm gonna go eat some food now thanks so much